Welcome, this is the AP Physics 1 video lecture. This is covering the unit torque and rotational motion. The section is going to be on rotational kinetic energy. We look at energy. In the line world, there is gravitational potential energy. We define that as UG equals to MGH. There is no gravitational potential energy equivalent for the circle world because the gravitational potential energy is the same in both the line and circular world. Potential energy is defined as its displacement away from equilibrium based on H times gravity times its mass. Our two scenarios. First, we see our traditional problem of a block sliding down a ramp with height H and a mass M. We saw that here, it goes down the ramp in a straight line over the distance d. We would say it has a linear kinetic energy. That's also called your translational energy. K is going to be equal to 1 half mass times velocity squared. The unit for that is J for joules. Please understand that the kinetic energy translational describes how much the object moves in a straight line, like going down a ramp. In this scenario, we have a sphere that is rolling down a ramp. Here, the object has a rotational kinetic energy because it's circular, it's rotating, and it is defined by K is equal to one half the I, which is moment of inertia or rotational inertia, times its angular velocity squared. The unit is still joules. The rotational kinetic energy describes how much the object rotates about its center of rotation. When this object rolls down, it slides down and travels a distance as well as rotate. So here, the ball rotates down the ramp. It has both linear and rotational kinetic energy. The only time that it has rotational kinetic energy and only rotational kinetic energy would be like a top that just spins and does it and stays in place. Now you should wonder what causes rotational kinetic energy? We know that it can just be defined as one half IW squared. We see that there are two ways. First of all, let's take when a object just slides down a ramp and when an object rolls on a ramp. These are the two scenarios we're looking at. One, the object will slide down if there is no frictional force. So notice that the force um, that is holding it onto the ground doesn't move. Now, notice the roll. The arrow is moving as it rolls down. That shows that the object will roll down. Why? Because there is a friction force. That friction force is what is causing that arrow of that force to change directions. Let's look at the free body diagram of a rolling ball. Notice there are four forces acting on this ball. Their length and their locations are very important. The normal force and the gravitational force here cancels out. They're the same length. So the object doesn't go up or down. The force to the right is long because it's showing that the object is moving towards the right. Notice that the friction force here is not at the center, but rather than it's on the surface because that is where friction force is. Because the force is now applied away from the center of mass. So here, if you take a look, this shows that it has a radius r that that force is being applied to therefore a torque is going to arise a torque is defined by your radius perpendicular times the force that's why you would say that a for a torque does exist here that torque will actually induce the rotation to occur let me repeat that the torque will induce a rotation to occur. And the torque 
is caused by the friction force being applied at a distance r away from the center of the shear. Now, the fact that the friction force here induces a torque, does it do work? Friction force actually does it, doesn't do work. Remember, work is defined by force times the distance parallel. In this case, static friction does not do work because the point of contact of the sphere at each instant does not slide, but moves perpendicular to the plane. So notice this is perpendicular. The fact that it's perpendicular, the work is zero. Let's look at a traditional total mechanical energy of a system problem. Here, the ball is going to rotate down the ramp. So a ball is a thinly spherical shell, so it's hollow in the inside. Its moment of inertia or rotational energy is 2 thirds mr squared with a radius of 0 0.25 meters. Starts on top of a 2 meter high ramp at rest. The ball rolls down the rough surface ramp. Graph the total energy at every, at every given step in the scenario. So when the ball's on top of the ramp, we would say that it has all gravitational potential energy. And if you would like to calculate this, it is just simple m g h okay there's only gravitational potential energy at the start when it reaches the middle of the ramp we would say that the gravitational potential energy is less there is some kinetic translational energy because it's moving in a line down the ramp as well as it's rotating there is kinetic rotational energy we can say that the gravitational potential potential energy is actually converted into both the translational and the kinetic energy of the rotational kinetic energy. So as it goes down and it hits the middle, it has both translational kinetic energy and rotational kinetic energy. At the bottom of the ramp, there is no more potential energy and all that energy is transferred to either the kinetic translational energy or the rotational kinetic energy because at the end it's still rotating okay we would say that there's zero gravitation there's zero gravitational potential energy is left because all of it has converted into translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy if you would like to see the mathematical equation that you might have to end up using on the exam you can use this the energy initial is going to be equal to the energy at any point. We saw that there are three energy parts that make it up. The gravitational potential, kinetic trans, the kinetic uh, in a line, which is kinetic trans, tr kinetic translational and kinetic rotation. So these are your initials, which is your knot, and these to the right are your final. Notice at the start, you only have u, u g naught because that represents the gravitational potential energy at the start. And at the end, you only have kinetic, translational, and kinetic rotation. Plugging it in, these are the variables. So you could see that the mgh is going to be equal to 1 half mv squared, which is the translational kinetic energy, plus 1 half moment of inertia times angular velocity squared. Um, this equation has been used in many ways on the AP exam, so make sure you know how to derive it as well as be able to uh, manipulate it to get certain variables solved for. A classical problem in, the, in this section deals with a combination of both angular momentum and rotational kinetic energy. Here's the scenario. A ball of mass m collides with a smooth hanging rod of mass mass big M and a length L such that one end of the rod is connected to a pivot that the rod will rotate around if acted upon by net torque. After the sphere collides, which is the ball, with the rod, the sphere sticks to the rod and both the object rotates around the pivot with a common angular velocity. Here you go. Before the collision and after the collision. Yes, the picture looks different. It's just I had a fine two equivalent pictures. So. The first question, 
Kimberly argues the rod experienced a torque caused by the force of the ball hitting in it. Therefore, the angular momentum is not conserved, and there is an angular impulse. Please correct the student's statement. Here's the answer. The rotational collision under consideration is considered an inelastic collision in which no net torque is exerted on the system. Therefore, the angular momentum is the same immediately before the collision and immediately after the collision. So angular momentum is conservative. So that's where Kimberly was wrong. Question two, Anna argues, since the rod is smooth, the energy is conservative. All the linear kinetic energy from the ball is transferred into the rod's angular kinetic energy. Correct the statement. We would say that in an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is converted into non-mechanical energy during the collision. Please look at your angular momentum notes or your momentum notes to, to clarify this idea if you do not remember it. In an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is converted into non-mechanical energy during the collision. Therefore, the rotational kinetic energy of the system immediately before the collision is greater than the rotational kinetic energy of the system immediately after. Therefore, energy was lost during the collision. The energy before was greater than the energy after. The energy after was less because energy was transferred outside of the system. So you can say that in this collision, the system is actually open. Let's look at this scenario now. This is like the same image, but there's something different. So the ball of mass, they gave you the angler, um, the moment of inertia for the ball, which is MR squared, collides with a smooth hanging rod its moment of inertia is one third um, big M L squared, such that one end of the rod is connected to a pivot and the rod will rotate if act upon a net torque. After colliding with the rod, the sphere momentarily comes to a rest. So here it shows V, equ v equals to zero after it hits it. And then it falls vertically down to the floor. The rod swings upwards with an angular velocity um, omega one. There you go. So that energy seems like it was transferred. You want to derive an equation to describe that angular speed of omega one of that rod. So how, what makes up this angular um, velocity of the rod? Well, here's the answer. Please understand that angular momentum is actually conservative here. So you can calculate the initial angular momentum of the sphere as measured from the pivot and set that equal to the angular momentum of the rod immediately after the collision. Here you go. So this is the angular momentum of the sphere. And this is after you plug in the rotational inertia for it. So angular momentum of the sphere is MR squared times omega B. That is the angular velocity of the ball. Now you want to look at the rod. The rod, same thing. Um, moment of inertia for the rod times the angular velocity of the rod. We know that the angular ve um, that the angular velocity of the rod is considered to be w1. That's what the formula gives it. So I made that substitution. wr equals to w1. The moment of inertia for the rod is defined by one third big M L squared. That was given in the equation. Now you can use conservation of angular momentum. Set the set the linear the angular momentum of the ball or the sphere equal to the angular velocity of the rod. Substitute the variables in. Now here you could do some algebra. So I multiply three to the other side, then divide it by m l squared to get w one. This would be how you derive an equation for the angular velocity of the rod that swings up. Notice that this collision, it is uh, elastic because the, um, the ball's velocity was completely transferred into the rod's energy. Sorry, the momentum of the ball is completely transferred to the momentum of the rod. 
okay velocity was transferred okay um, this is when momentum is conservative and this is when kinetic energy is also conservative the system is closed in this case right um, this might feel like this is an angular momentum question but it's related to rotational kinetic energy because this omega one is sometimes used to if they ask you to now calculate the uh, rotational kinetic energy so the rotational kinetic energy again was defined by this so you're going to need to know how to derive that omega value okay but that's it that's everything that you need to know when it comes to um, the rotational kinetic energy